Well, hello, we are back. So today we're going to be talking about how to enable Hyper-V for use on Windows 11. Well, that's the um, host that I'll be using. If you have a Windows 10 box, um, you can also enable this feature as well or role. And also you can use a Windows server if you have it. So it really doesn't matter. It depends on how you want to choose your host and um what you want to use right but before we get started there's a few things that we should really talk about so um when it comes to selecting um your the hyper v right basically your host you need to check you to see if your host is actually compatible right so you want to make sure especially for like windows 10 windows 11 um Windows 11 Pro or Enterprise, I think, comes with it already. Um, and I think also 10 Pro, anything like an enterprise at a professional level, you should have Hyper-V already um, ready to go. It's just, you just got to enable it. Um, you're looking for a 64-bit processor um, with what's called SLAT. So that's like second-level address translation. It's very important, right? If you don't know what it, look, what it is, look it up. But this also needs to be on your system. And you want to have a minimum RAM. I think it's about 4 gigs um, just for hosting. But definitely if you're hosting Hyper-V, 4 gigs of RAM is not going to get you too far. Because the system alone for stability, you want to have at least a good 8 gigs just for the host by itself. And if you are going to be doing virtual machines... You need a lot of RAM. Like, that's the, the main thing, RAM and CPU, right, to get these virtual machines um, going. So just note that you need to beef up your your RAM, right? And um, if you don't have a great CPU that will go alongside with this RAM, you're going to have to look into that as well. 64 gigs of 64 bit processor. And then also something that's very important to make sure that your BIOS supports hardware virtualization support. This is a key element if you try to install Hyper-V and you're getting some errors. This could be one of the reasons why. It's because it doesn't support um, hardware virtualization. Right, so in order to install, I'm going to get started right now. In order to install, I'm I'm on the on the the Windows 11 box. Um, I think I click something here. Uh, it's starting to come up. I don't know what it is. It's probably the date. Yeah, something crazy. All right. So, in order to get started, right, you want to en enable the feature for um for you know, to, to get Windows um, Hyper-V installed, right? So like I said, it's a role that's already there. And one good key thing you can do if you don't know shortcuts yet, or if you still haven't played with them, if you look at your keyboard, the Windows button, just always look for it. So the Windows button and press R together, it will populate um, the run command, right? Just like that, right? Windows and the R button will populate what's called the run dialog box. That's what they actually call it. And what you're going to type in, you can do something like this. Um, MS Info 32. And that will basically bring up your system information window. So you can see like your system summary. Right. So something like this. MS um, I think Info and it should be uh, 32. Right. It's a good shortcut to bring up your your um, there you go so basically we're looking at stuff like this right there right as you can see I have 128 gigs of RAM installed here and um, nice little CPU I'm running the i9 3.5 gigs and I have eight cores with 16 logical processors so it's it's not the best, but it's enough that I can use as this VC to build out a couple um, virtual machines. Okay, so that's how this 
box is set up. All right, so now we're going to go back to Windows R again. We're going to hit that note, and we are going to go in, and we're going to type in this time app wiz dot cpl and what this is going to do is going to take you into the programs and features window right which will show you how to where you can install um applications turn on windows features and stuff like that so right over here at the top this is where you'll go and you will do turn windows features on and it will populate like this right and as you can see and the features you're going to scroll down and you will check hyper v which is right there and you want to make sure that all of these by default when you check this normally it checks the other two boxes i already have this installed right but this is how you would install it to start off okay and then once you click ok here um you're just going to basically wait for the installation process to complete and then once it's complete you'll have to restart the computer this is where after restarting it will check for the hardware virtualization on your bios right and um after that you're you're good to go to start up um hyper v right so now let's say i just install it for the first time and i'm going to run the box um this is what it would look like. It won't look like this because I have a DC01 already created for what I'm working on the lab, right? But you can see um, the name of your host will always show up here because this is Hyper-V Manager. And then you have the VC01, which is the name of my host right here, right? So this is basically where you want to configure some settings and optimize the, the virtual machine performance. Um, so this is where you will start. One of the cool things I like to start off with virtual switch managers over here and you'll notice that inside of the next videos come you will see that I created a switch called default switch so when you're going through the next videos I'll be selecting the default switch and you're going to probably wonder where did I get it this is where you create it you just go to new virtual switch external you create a virtual switch right here You'll give it a name up there, right? You'll apply it. If it's an external, internal, or private, right? Now, there are three, three, um, basically, three switches or three types that you can create. As you can see, if you do private, you can do internal, you can do external, right? Um, major difference between the, the three. So... Hyper-V itself, just like any other um, box, it comes with um, different switches. On VMware, I think they're called like VM0 or something, VM01. When you create a switch on Hyper-V, it's basically creating um, a new NIC card, right? And once you click OK here, and you go into your property settings for network settings, you're going to see that it creates a new NIC card. But before we get there, let's talk about the switches. So an external network, um, or if you, tie, if, you, if you build a new virtual switch and you tie it to the external network, right? this is going to be a switch that is bound to the physical network card with the host. So basically, it provide all your virtual machines that are located on your Hyper-V box. They will be able to connect directly with your hosts, right? So the internet and all that stuff, um, that's how all of that stuff will be straightly connected. Now, if you go to create an internal network, this is not bound to the physical network at all, but it also allows traffic between the VM and the host itself, right? So basically you can, move you can you can use the vms to talk or communicate this way internally on um on this switchblade without access to the actual physical network card and then the last but not least the private network so the private switch is normally used for virtual machines to communicate with each other right 
you have the option to create whichever you feel like but for this lab purposes we're going to be building a few of these we're going to build external internal because when we start doing different networking um inside of the lab you'll see that we'll only need certain vms to talk on the internal network and then also if you're working like with a router a router and a switch it also needs to go out to the external network which will be on your host machine to go to your isp all right so i'm gonna click cancel here because i've already created that but if i go back to here and show you this switch once you click it it will tell you that right now the default network switch that i have it is an internal network switch that i have set up already that we'll be using right and as you can see right here see that the default network switch automatically gives virtual machine access to the computer's network using net network address translation cool beans all right now a few other things you can do here you can do go into hyper-v settings and remember earlier i was telling you that you want to use enhanced session mode this is where you can check it right you can set up basically how you want the mouse to be released inside of your machines by default i leave it this way but if you want to use different key shortcuts you can customize it that way right to machine keyboard you don't have to play with this it's up to you but if you really want to um mess around with these um be my guess right now the virtual machines um this is the default folder where it will store all the virtual machines on your systems right and there you go this is also the default folder so i recommend that you change these by default do not have anything riding on your c drive because you want to keep things separate you want to keep your data separate and this is why it's good to start off by creating a D drive, right? So if you don't have one, once you build out or start building out your network, it's a good practice to, in this PC, you wanna have a D drive that like I have here set up. And on my D drive, is where I will be creating um, all your virtual machines. And then you keep your C drive separate just for the operating system itself, right? So that's basically um, how I have mine set up. So all your virtual machines, once you start creating it, we'll go over here on a Microsoft, Windows, Hyper-V, and then like the DC one that you're seeing up here, right here, this is where it's, it's, it's um, being hosted, right? Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. So as you can see, Microsoft Windows Hyper-V up here. All you have to do, you can just put a D right here and then remove program data. And then by default, it's good. So that's what we're going to do right here. So let's change this. We're going to put a D right there, right? And That's where we're going to set that. And then the same thing here. I put everything in the D drive. And we want to put everything right there. Click apply. Right. Hopefully it doesn't scream at me because I already have a, a DC that I created over there. So by default, though, this is where we're going to be saving all our machines once we create them. They will come over here. All right. So the sand manager i wouldn't really worry about this this is normally when you start doing fiber channels like when you get into that deep stuff um later on um with like hba ports and stuff like that look this up if you want to you'll see how it goes but for what we're doing this is a whole nother level um or pretty much a whole new new video right so i would even i wouldn't stress over this right at all all right um obviously you have other functions you can remove servers whatever um do all that good stuff so that's basically um the hyper v sentence up here you can connect to a server so let's say for example i am on hyper v manager and i'm using vc01 this is coming in one of the labs i'm going to build this out and i'm going to show you guys because it's very important 
you can connect to additional servers with their Hyper-Vs and they're, they will be listed under here. So VC1 is on this blade. Once we start building out my other server stacks, you will see VC02, 3, 4, and all of those um, joining us, right? If the machines are not an Active Directory, which the host will not be, you're going to run into some serious issues. But I, ha I have a fix for that. I figured it out and I'm willing to share it with you guys when we get there. Okay, so that's basically it guys. And then um, if you follow the new videos to come, once we're getting ready to start, you just go to new, virtual machine, hard disk, floppy disk, whichever you want to create, and you just roll along. Hyper-V doesn't come with a lot of um, features, but it's enough to get you where you need to be especially if you're just trying to lab stuff out, right? Nothing too huge, but like, like I said, you need to know these little settings, right? Play with it around, right? Read up on it, get to know the tools that you're working with so that it can help you out later on when we start building out the lab, right? Okay, guys, this is just a short clip to so introduce you to Hyper-V, how we install it, um, basically where we're going to be storing the default settings, um, we went over the RAM, um, the basic configurations that you need to get your system up and running. Don't forget to turn on all the features that you need, such as um, make sure it's a 64 bit. You need to make sure you have the minimum amount of RAM to run it. And also hardware virtualization. I cannot stress this enough. You need this in order for your Hy-PV to pretty much work on your machine. So. When you're building out, if you're building a PC or a gaming PC that you have an old one and you want to turn it into, you know, to run some virtual machines, just check out the facts. And you can also go to Microsoft Tech Community and do, um, you know, this is product is Microsoft, and you will see all the settings that you you need. They'll they'll walk you through the process. Okay, so guys, if you enjoy this video, really appreciate it. If you give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, ring that bell. And let us know how we're doing. We really appreciate it. You watching these videos help us to keep going. Help us to keep building for the community. The smarter the forces, the better the forces. All right. So until next time, I really appreciate you guys for tuning in. And like I said, give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think. All right.